What's up guys, it's Bloodburger here. I uh, wanted to do a new tips and tricks video because I've been getting a lot of questions on um, how should I choose a GPU, a graphics card, how should I choose a CPU uh, processor, um, what should I use, how do I figure out what's better than what. It can be pretty confusing um, if you're just starting out and you've never really built a PC before. There's so many processors and graphics cards out there. You're very likely, if you don't know what you're doing, to pick the wrong one. So. Um, wanted to talk briefly about that today and introduce introduce you guys to two websites that I use to uh, really narrow down the process for me. So, open up the uh, browser window you see here. Benchmark is a standard or a point of reference against which things may be compared or assessed. Simple stuff. Basically, it's a graph um, that will show you how well that particular processor or graphics card did in a series of tests. Obviously. Um, Benchmarks can be games, gaming benchmarks. They can be um, benchmark software like uh, 3D Mark. Um, I forget the names of them right now because I haven't done it in so long. But um, there are two websites that I use that basically narrow everything down for me. So basically, the first one is going to be uh, Passmark Software. <coughs> this is a really good site. Um, it does benchmarks for both uh, CPUs and GPUs. So let's first look at video cards because a lot of times people want to know which video card they want to upgrade first or uh, which video card to choose. Now you see this list here basically will show you um, you know from the very top down which card is performing the best, what price it's listed at, how it's scored in uh, G3D Mark as of May 28th. So that would be today. Um, <coughs> you see the uh, GeForce GTX 670 is at the top here. It's got a mark of 4104, and it's $399. Now, the way that I use this is I choose the best card, um, the highest scoring card that I can afford within my budget. Okay, um, if you can afford 399, boom, you're in luck. That's the best card available right now based on this test. Okay. Um, if you go into the greater detail, you click the card, you can actually see how it compares to the closest cards, uh, the most common video cards. Okay. Then there's also the video card value stat. Now this is basically performance per dollar. Okay. Um, you can see that the HD 6850 is the best value per dollar, not per performance per se, because clearly the 670 outperforms it, but basically this number represents bang for your buck okay so um, based on how much you want to spend you can look here and see how it stacks up against other cards close to that uh, price range and and uh, not so much performance but you know based on how well they perform in that bracket of types of cards okay I know that might be kinda confusing um, as always you can always leave me questions comments and I'll go into greater detail if something you know gets over your head now they also have a pricing history here this will show you exactly what the card uh, is doing as far as like performance. You see here, started at about three ninety nine ninety nine, peaked at about four oh nine, and then right about three ninety nine back to three ninety nine again for this card. Underneath that, you have a list of merchants that's actually selling the card. Um, you see Newegg and Amazon, or actually Amazon doesn't have this card available anymore, so I don't know why this is listed here, but. Um, Basically, you can click on this link and go right over to that st uh, sh store and pick the card up if that's the one you decide on. Now, <coughs> excuse me, you can also do this for CPUs. Um, what I neglected to mention before I looked at the video cards is that usually I will only choose the high end CPU chart. I'm not really interested in the mid range or the low range. Okay, and you shouldn't be either if you're an enthusiast and you're looking for good performance. So I always stick to the high end CPU chart or video card chart. Um, you see it's the same type of list except only it's uh, CPUs now. So you can do the same kind of uh, comparison with these. Uh, it has the you know, ranking for uh, processes in that performance bracket as well as price per or value per dollar rather. So uh, that's the first tool I use, uh, Passmark Software, invaluable. The link will be in the dis uh, description there so make sure you check that out if it's something that you're interested in. Um, the next one is Anantech. Okay, this is a pretty good, cool tool. Also, they have the bench feature. If you click bench here, uh, it'll take you to a little tool that'll allow you to compare 
CPUs, uh, GPUs, and uh, it looks like SSDs here against one another. So just for example's sake, let's choose CPU. And in this uh, drop-down box here, let's pick my processor, which is the AMD X6 1090T. And let's compare that against one of the Intel processors, uh, 990X, their hex core. Okay. Click View Comparison. And you can see that the uh, Intel machine is fairly stronger than mine based on these numbers here. Let me go into a little bit more detail about what this stuff means. These are actual benchmarks. Okay, um, This is an Adobe Photoshop test, um, a retouching test. Basically, the time is in seconds, how many seconds it takes to actually complete that test. Um, and it says here, lower is better. So you want to pay attention to what these um, benchmarks actually tell you because if you don't understand you know you don't know about video encoding you're not really that familiar with frames per second stuff like that just take a look at the uh, list here and it'll tell you higher is better or lower is better okay now usually near the bottom there'll be some gaming benchmarks you see World of Warcraft here um, frames per second obviously um, 60 is probably the, the best frame rate that your eye is going to be able to see. Um, I personally can feel the difference if it's higher than that. Um, that really all depends on you. Uh, but basically you want a frame rate of at least 60. Um, you want higher than that if you plan on streaming. Okay, so you see my, my uh, what is this, piece or GPU or, yeah, my processor, sorry. Um, it's getting about 69.8 uh, frames per second. The Intel CPU is getting 103. Um, clearly that's a lot better. You want a higher frame rate when you're gaming. Um, typically if you're going to be streaming as well, as soon as you turn the stream on, you will lose 10 to 20 frames per second. So uh, obviously 103 is going to give you a ton of overhead. It'll only drop down to about 80, which is clearly way above the 60. So you still will be having a nice frame rate in game. Um, your stream will probably be smooth and you won't encounter any problems. So these numbers are pretty important also. Um, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell. These two websites should help you a lot when you're choosing um, a GPU or a CPU. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about this, feel free to leave them in the uh, box below. And uh, thank you guys for watching.